Yesterday we, yesterday we considered Easter, mystery of exemption. And I said to us, according to Acts chapter 12 and verse 4, that there was nothing Herod could do. I told us that there was nothing Herod could do because it was Easter. Herod could not harm Peter because it was Easter. And I did explain to us that God has already packaged an anointing for Passover in Easter, that no matter the counsel of the enemy, once it's Easter, God exempts us. And I decree in the name of Jesus, by the mercy of the Almighty God, you will be exempted. Exempted from aggression and from wickedness of hell. Exempted from satanic manipulations, maneuverings. Exempted for all that the devil intends. You shall be exempted. You shall be exempted. You shall be exempted. If your amen is louder, you are the one I'm talking to. Now, I want to I will consider something yesterday. What was the first point I gave? No pain, no gain. What the second thing I said? He knew who will betray him. He knew who will betray him. And I explained to us that God needs to open our eyes so that we know those who will betray us or who have a satanic agenda concerning our lives. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. If you read Matthew, the book of Matthew chapter 26, if you read from verse 23 to verse 25, Matthew 26 from verse 23 to 25, Jesus said, one of you will betray me. One of you will betray me. And Judas asked a question. Is it I? Jesus said, you have said it. Yet Judas stood up from there. When that is the most direct prophecy. Write this down. People will always be people. There is nothing you can do for a man who has a bad heart. Jeremiah 17 verse 9. He said the heart of man is deceitful above all things. And desperately wicked. Who can know it? Sir, you can know a man's address. You can know a man's face. You can know a man's educational background. You can know a man's wife. You can know a man's children. But you can never know a man's heart. Even God said, who can know it? Direct prophecy. One of you will betray me. He said, he said you, you are the one. You, you, you have said so. In Luke chapter 22, if you read verse 3, the Bible says, and Satan entered Judas. If the word of God does not enter you, something else will enter but if you read from verse 31, 32 down, 30, 31, 32, the Bible speaks concerning Peter. He said, Jesus said, Simon, Simon, Satan has desired to sift you as wheat, but I have prayed for you. Now look here. Look here. One, Satan entered him. The other, Satan has not entered. Satan desired him. One, he has already entered. The second, he desired. Which one was an emergency? Oh, nobody's following me. <laughs> One of them, Satan desired him. Satan was planning to enter. One, he already entered. So which one was emergency? The one that has entered, right? Okay, Jesus said you. Your emergency is immaterial. Because even if I pray, he has nothing I can do for you. Let me pray for the one who has a good heart. Jesus never prayed for Judas. Because a man whose heart is set for evil, prayer doesn't work for him. Do you wonder why some people can stay close to an anointed man? Stay close to a man that is anointed. People are testifying, but they are not testifying. They stay under a ministry of grace. Things are happening, but nothing is happening for them. It is because the state of the heart is the breeding ground for the unprecedented miracles. When the heart is not in order, nothing can work. When the heart is scattered, nothing can be gathered. The reason no testimony has come, your heart. People will always be people. There are 
that things you cannot change. I'll tell you three things under that. Then I'll give you the next point and then we'll pray. Judas! How can somebody tell you this is what I saw? God has an agenda for everyone's life. But God's agenda is not as powerful as your desire. Your parents say go to school. It's not as important as you making up your mind to go to school. Your life does not begin the day you are born. Because you have no control over life when you are born. Your life begins the day you tell yourself some truth and become serious with life. Luke 15, 17, he said when he came to himself. That means all this while, the prodigal son was not himself. When he came to himself. You can't change a man whose heart in Luke 15, 17. Luke 15, 17. He said when he came to himself, he said, how many hired servants? Nobody prayed for him. There are people, don't advise them. Leave them. When they get to a point, they advise themselves. That is when change will come. Am I talking to somebody here? Am I talking to somebody here? You see one of the problems Judas had. One of the problems he had was that Judas began to relate with those people who wanted Jesus to be killed. When your friends begin to relate with people that don't like you, please cut off. When people who are close to you begin to relate with people who don't want to see your face, please cut off. It is already a sign. They may take their greeting. They may just say hi to them. But please cut off because whoever loves you will not hang around people who want you dead. Whoever loves you will not celebrate people who mean evil of you. Am I talking to somebody here? So we need to begin to understand some truths about life. Some things I share with some of you at times, some of the messages I share in five minutes, in two minutes, in three minutes, it took me ten years of several mystics to learn them. And I'll tell you in five minutes. Sit down. I will assess life. Write this. Nothing negative happens to you without an initial sign. You were either too deaf, blind, or you explained it away. Nothing negative happens without an initial sign. There must be a sign. There must be a feeling. There must be an attitude. But you either ignore it, you explain it, you let it go, and at the end, it comes back to hurt you. It comes back to break your heart. There are certain truths about life. When you understand them, you begin to live on the wings of an ego. God has an agenda, but your desire a life of desire. Psalm 37 verse 4. Delight yourself in the Lord and he shall grant the desires of your heart. Proverbs chapter 11 verse 23. The desire of the righteous is only good. It's only good. Proverbs 10 24. He said God grant the desire of the righteous. Psalm chapter 145 verse 16. He opened his hands and fulfilled the desire of every living thing. Psalm 146, verse 145, verse 19. The word of God declares. He said that God fulfills and grants the desires of them that fear him. Desire. Nothing right without desire. Paul even said in Romans chapter 10 and verse 1. He said, my prayer and my desire is that all Israel should be saved. He had a desire. Luke chapter 9, verse 9. Zacchaeus desired to see him for who he is. He desired. In 1 Samuel chapter 9 and verse 20, I think, the Bible says that Samuel said to Saul, concerning the asses that you are missing three days ago, set not your mind on them because they have been found. But now, the desire of all Israel is on you. Desire. Psalm 92 verse 11, he said, my eyes shall see my desire upon the wicked and them that hate me. What's your desire? Mark 11, 24, whatsoever things you desire when you pray, believe that you receive them, and you shall have them. First Peter chapter 2, I think verse 2. As newborn babes desire the sincere meek of the word of God that you may grow thereby. Desire. What is your desire? Proverbs 18 verse 1. True desire. A man 
He said, having separated himself, seek it and intermediate it with all wisdom. No matter God's agenda, your desire. What is your desire for your own life? Am I, am I talking to somebody here? How have you carved out, mapped out, shaping out? People will always be people. Write this down. If you use people, people will use you. If you enjoy using people, people will also use you. It's a matter of time. You break somebody's heart, somebody will break your own. It's a matter of time. You hurt people, people will hurt you. It's a matter of time. You are playing games with people's life. People will play with you. Just, just wait, it's a matter of time. Am I communicating? If you read John chapter 12, if you read verse 6, the Bible says, when Judas was talking to Jesus and said, what purpose is this waste? And the Bible says, not because he cared for the poor, but because he was a thief. He was the one keeping the bag. Sir, Judas was the treasurer. Sir, treasurers are trusted people. For a man to make you a treasurer because he trusts you. Okay, okay, let me give you an example. Somebody just say, praise the Lord. I want to give a testimony. I was an armed robber. I was a, a thief. Now, I'm a child of God. I'm giving this testimony. I'm giving an illustration. Praise the Lord. I mean, Pastor, now pray for him. Say, which department do you want to join? Pastor. God told me to join the finance department. You see your reaction? What where department will you tell him to join? Prayer band! No, not sanctuary. Sanctuary, he will steal the soap. He will steal, he will steal the soap and steal. He will steal the even water. He will steal water. A thief is a thief. Have you not seen thief that steal one leg of shoe? He has a Samsung phone, but he stole an iPhone charger. If I can't use it, I'll sell it. <laughs> Either way, it's useful. <laughs> so he said, join, join. <laughs> he said, join prayer band. <laughs> Even inside prayer band, they keep things far from him. And they give him prayer points. They observe him. <laughs> Am I communicating here? So for Jesus to make Judas a treasure, oh my God, please, when people trust you, don't hurt them. When people trust you, don't hurt them. When people trust you, don't hurt them. He made him treasure because he trusted him. He wanted to give him enough opportunity. Oh my God, this life and this world is deep. When people trust you, don't hurt them. Remember the trust they had. There were 12 disciples. There was Matthew, who was a tax collector. He was a man that knew how to keep money. In today's day, he was like a banker. He was the one that should have been made a treasurer. But yet, Jesus trusted Judas. Not because he was qualified. One of the reasons people mess up is when they start feeling they are qualified for a privilege, then they abuse it. Anytime you think you are qualified for a privilege, then you begin to abuse it. Anytime. That's why I said to myself, I am not qualified to even handle this microphone. I'm not qualified to go to nations of the world as a preacher of the gospel. I'm not qualified to be the senior pastor of OFM. I'm not qualified to be anything in life. It is grace that found me. I am what I am by the grace of God. And that is why I will not be proud. That is why I will not be arrogant because grace found me. It is grace that made me what I am. Don't betray when people trust you. When God trusts you, learn to appreciate. When people put confidence in you, some of you, when you get back to work, you may need to send a text message to your boss in the office. Say, thank you, sir, for employing me. He said, why are you thanking me? He said, I just look at my life. I say, I should thank you. Thank you, landlord, for giving me this house. Why are you thanking me? Are you planning not to pay your rent? Say, no. There were many people that came, but yet you gave it to me. Thank you. Tell your husband, thank you for marrying me. Because there are many ladies who not, no, no, not catwalk. They do elephant walk. Not even catwalk. The man saw them, but he ignored them. When people give you opportunity, thank God for them. Because you may have still be hungry. You may have still been in the street. You may have been in prison. Thank God for opportunity.
opportunity. Don't abuse privilege. When people believe in you, when people pay your school fees, spend one week sending them text message every day. Thank you for my school fees. On Tuesday, thank you for my school fees. On Wednesday, thank you. Let me get to a point. They say, why are you thanking me? He said, because if not you, I will not have written my exam. If not you, learn to appreciate people. Don't abuse privilege. Many are fasting and they are praying to have the privilege you have and yet they don't have it. They lobby, it doesn't come. They play games, it doesn't come. But you got it free of charge. Learn to appreciate. Life is a privilege. It is not a right. Life is a privilege. It is not... One day I said to my wife, thank you for marrying me. He said, why? I said, you understand. Because even me, I can't marry me. Me, I can't marry me. I can't. I can't. He said, thank you. He said, what's going on? I said, I just thank you. I said, thank you. I'm very complicated. Me, I know. One day my wife was saying, he said, what do you want to eat? I told her, they went, they prepared it. When they brought it, I said, this is not what I want to eat again. I want to eat something else. He said, ah. I said, do another one. They did the third, second one. When they came, I said, bring that first one. Go and hit it. And bring, he said, my husband, you are complicated. I said, I know, I know. Thank God! Are you a driver? Thank your boss. Learn! I have quite a number of pastors, but one of the pastors that thrills me a lot is Reverend Fidelis. Every time he will tell me, Papa, thank you for what we are enjoying. Amongst all, he does that more than every pastor in OFM. He said, thank you. He is blessed. He may, he, he, if he looks at his present level, he does not even need to do that. But he remembers. Amongst all! He does that. We get into a nation. He bought his ticket with his money. He will still come to me. Thank you for letting me come here with you. But some see it as a right. In our land, I they come on. In your land. <laughs> Every man would love and trust and entrust an appreciative person. People shouldn't buy you gifts. You owe the gift. This is my hair. Now the real one. Now the real hair. This is a fake. A gift. A gift is a gift. It, a gift is a gift is the best. Even if it's not best, say it's best. Ah, God. For, for you to consider. We live. Do you, you, you know what people are going through? There are people, one year, nobody dash them anything. January to December. 1st to 31st. Nobody dash them one thing. You they dash your phone. You are checking whether it's China or original one. I wish I was talking to somebody. Judas, they made you treasurer. Bible says because he was a thief. I don't understand Jesus so. Who makes a thief treasurer? But if I think like that, I begin to ask myself. Some of us, with all our character and attitude, who made us men of God? With your bad character in the choir, they gave you solo. You, you, you can't. You came out. You are doing solo. Praise God. We have a number. See your mouth, your cigar mouth. Praise God. We have a number. See your low for four mouth. You are using to introduce song and. Heaven did not slap you. God allowed you. See, sang the song. You are, you are mother. Yeah, 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 yeah. God didn't seize your voice in the yeah process. Just seize your voice. It be, why? Because grace found you. And you now see it as a right. And it is nonsense for anybody. And it is nonsense for anybody. That we are insurance does not mean that you I don't think nonsense. Who are you? Do people ask me at times, say, Apostle, why are you always happy? Do you know sometimes after service I get messages, ah, you are so happy today. <laughs> you don't understand. If I remember, you know where I for come? Look at the name. What? Does that look like a name of somebody who go around the world? See the name. But now pick one man from the mouth. Now pick and yeah, yeah, boy. So you go around the world. Sometimes I just say, God, thank you. Mm. Thank you. That's how you, because they remove you from head, remove you from being head of department. You left department. Because you cannot come back to be serving somebody uh, when you have been on guard before. They made you head of department. As soon as they remove you from the head of department, you remove your head. Judas, you are a thief. And yet, when you use people, as far as Judas was, Judas was concerned, he was using Christ. I'm going to show you where they used him to. As far as he was concerned, wow, no worry. Huh? We know what we are doing now. This man, hmm, I'm just, I wait, I'm arranging myself. When I, when I balance, 
That's what Judas was saying. What are you doing there? Because there were many reasons for Judas to suspect Jesus. All that were spiritual about it. But Judas was suspicious. Of course. I can tell you many. Was suspicious. One of them, Jesus wanted to talk to the woman by the well. In John chapter 4, he sent all his disciples to go and buy food. What oh, Judas must have been? Judas would have said, come. He was the treasurer now. He's the one that we asked for money from food. Where is Christ? He's with the woman by the way. <laughs> Why did he send all of us in? Which did he talk? A bad guy. <laughs> Man, Jesus, Jesus. What are they discussing? You see what was working on his mind? Because you all only see what you want to see. The woman came. And the woman was using her hair to massage the feet of Jesus. Judas was there. Hey. Jesus, Jesus. <laughs> using her hair. To massage and now spread perfume. Hey, Judas, hey, this man. <laughs> hey. One day Jesus woke up and tied towel. So all of you bring your leg. <laughs> Want to wash it? Judas said, "Hey, <laughs> occultic. <laughs> occultic." Peter said, "I won't." Jesus said, "If I don't wash your leg, you are not part of me." Uh -huh. By force. This occultism is by force. One day Jesus said, "If you can't eat my body." And drink my blood. You are not part of me. Not to come. And not to come. This man a vampire. He did drink blood. Those were the things Judas was seeing. But yet Peter said, Thou art Christ. The son of the living God. Am I talking at all? There are things to see you if you want to see. When you use people, you break people's hearts. In Luke 22, verse 4 to 6, Matthew 27, 3 to 4. When Luke 22, 4 to 6, Luke 22, verse 4 to 6. And he went his way and communed with the chief priest. You see, backstabbing people starts with communication. When you start communicating with the, communicating with the enemies, you're on your way to betraying. With the chief priest and captain, how we might betray him unto them. Verse 5. And they were glad. They were what? Glad. And covenanted. You know what a covenant means? A covenant is an agreement with a bond. And they covenanted. To give him money. Look at verse 6. And they promised and sought opportunity to betray him in the absence of the multitude. The people were using him. Just the way he used Jesus. The way he used Jesus to climb. You are in an office. You have already planned four months. That by the time I finish four months, yeah, what I would have taken. You already planned it. You think God is asleep? You think God is asleep? Matthew 27, 3 to 4. Am I blessing you at all? Matthew 27, 3 to 4. Matthew 27, 3 to 4. Then Judas, which had betrayed him, when he saw he was condemned, repented himself and brought again the 30 pieces of silver, the chief priests and elders. Verse 4. Saying, I have sinned in that I betrayed the innocent man blood, the innocent blood. And they said, What is thou to us? See thou to that. People that were glad when you say you bring your master. Now they have used you. You say, Oh, please. He said, What's my business? The same way your heart was hardened to your master. You know why? When people use you to get at people, it's for what they want. You are not important to them. What can you offer them? No, what can you offer them? There's nothing you can offer them now in your personal capacity. What will, what will they pick their phone to call you for? Your boss is in the office and there are a rival company and the rival company is using you as the sales girl or sales boy to get information about your boss. That boss in that company that is calling you now doesn't need you. They're only using you. And they get what they want. You'll be picking their call. They will not, you'll be calling them. They won't pick your call because you're no more useful. You, they, you know they think they swear for you. Somebody wanted to use me to reach my father in the Lord. He was calling me, calling me, calling me, calling me. I said, hey, what's the matter? I said, you know, Papa, I didn't, I didn't talk. From that day, I, I blocked his line. Because in my normal capacity, that person will not call me. So calling me to get information, I said, if I open my mouth on you, you won't like it. So let me just, you're older than me, so let me just block you. He said, this is my level. Which is the I don't get. You won't use me. How? Uh, you went to that, hey, you went to choir president house. Hey, yeah. Uh, when you got there, who did you meet? Hey, you met the sister. Okay, what were they doing? Eh, was a sketch short or long? Eh, why you asking? No, I'm just asking. No, nah, what was my business? What's my business? Yeah, I'm not, I'm not interested, but you know, I'm just asking. What time of the day did you meet them? There are people God will have to silence. 
any move of God has no vacuum. When God is moving, no vacuum. <laughs> if you mess up, God has a backup. The same people that were glad, all of a sudden, they say, what's our business? You think that when people use you to get at people, they will trust you? Eh? They won't trust you because they will know that for you to do this to this person that has given you food, you are not a human being. But let them just use you to get what they want and throw you away. There are certain things in life, certain workplace ethics that you don't even get in scriptures. Take your seat. Let me show you something. Do you notice Jesus? He knew from day one that Judas was going to betray him. He never mentioned it. He mentioned towards the exit of his ministry. If he had said it at the inception, the disciples would have finished Judas for being the future Sansan on their gary. Exactly. He says, this is the guy that will kill me. He will give me a kiss and I will die. Eh? He want to destroy our future. We kept quiet. He said nothing. That is capacity. Ability to know it and keep quiet till the time is ripe. When you use people, people will use you. There is something about principles that the almighty God has meted for every man. He's the almighty. Genesis 17 verse 1. He said to Abraham, walk before me. I'm the almighty God. Walk before me and be thou perfect. I'm the almighty. Genesis 28 and verse 3. I'm the almighty. He proved himself as the almighty. Genesis 35 verse 11. Almighty. Genesis 43 verse 14. Almighty. Genesis 48, verse 3, Almighty. Genesis 49, verse 25, Almighty. No brakata saradash, which I was talking to somebody at all. Money that he collected, can I surprise you? 80 pieces of silver was what Judas was paid. Not initial payment, total sum. And can I surprise you? It was 30 pieces of silver that was used to purchase a perfume that they used on his master feet. What you use, what you got as purchase, what you got rather as payment for ruining your master's life was what your master was using to wet his feet. Not that purchase. Now for Judas to know the amount of perfume, it means he had more than that in the purse. Sir, so can I say this to you? A criminal never has enough. A wicked man never does enough. An evil heart never conceives enough. A deceitful man never deceives enough. It is like a sea. He keeps doing it till it destroys him. A man robs a bank. is not caught. A man robs a shopping mall. is not caught. A man robs this one. is not caught. He now steals a phone and is caught. And is caught. Samson made many moral mistakes. But when Delilah came, Delilah was not a temptation. Delilah was a terminator. What they use on your master's feet was the total sum for purchase of the man's future. You ruin the future of 11 other people. I know some people say, Apostle, it was ordained by God. Of course we know, but let's check the processes that led to it. I'm so surprised. The Bible says, Jesus said to Judas, he traced down the son of man with a kiss. That was not the expectation. Jesus was not expecting that to be the sign of betrayal. That's why he asked, did you I betray the son of man with a key. Oh, really? At this point, you are still showing me love? Still pretending, even when I have uncovered you? Jesus expected, and he must, to ask that question, he must have expected an invasion. Judas come say, look at him. You betray me with a, a kiss? At this point, you are still being deceptive? I was reading my Bible some time back, and I asked a question. When I got to Luke chapter 22 from verse 31, Jesus said, Satan has desire to sift you at wit, talking to Peter. See, but I've prayed for you. Guess the next thing he said. When you are converted, threaten your brethren. Ah, it means that no matter your prayers, there are some things that will still happen. Peter, I pray though, it will still happen. I only prayed for grace for you to go through it. Sometimes when we pray, sometimes when we fast, and certain things still happen, it is not because God in your prayer. It means that when we prayed, what we received was grace to go through the battle. Sometimes when we seek the face of God, it's not that God doesn't hear us, but we receive grace. Apostle, I pray to be married. I am still single. What God is giving me from that prayer is grace to wait.
till the right man comes. You say, Apostle, I pray that I'm still jobless. What God is giving you grace to do is to, is to wait until a miracle job come. A job that no man will share God's glory. A job that no man will take the honor. No man will take the praise. Am I talking to somebody right now? A job! You know, <laughs> how, do I, how do I say this? My pain for you is that may you listen up before you say amen. You know, in church, they know how to say amen, even when they don't understand the prayer. Listen, my prayer for you is that may you not be ruined before you see the uselessness of the temptation. You didn't understand that. After Judas had made the mistake, was when he picked it up and said, 30 pieces of. He was already ruined. After a man has committed some kind of iniquity, now look at himself. Did I do this? May that not be your portion. After you made a destiny blunder, and your eyes now open to say, Is it this I must gauge my salvation for? For admission for school? I did this against the maker who has kept me. May you not be destroyed before you now discover you, you, should, you should not have said that thing you said. May you not be ruined. They say, what is that to us? Guess what? Judas threw the money on the floor. The Bible said they, that place became a place of burial. Because they said with their mouth that this money is of blood. Imagine occultic men knew blood money. Yet one following the master didn't know blood money. Blood money is not only when you take a man's life. When you hurt people to make profit, it is blood money. When you hurt people to make profit, it is blood money. When you break people's heart to make gain, it is blood money. When you, you, hurt, you ruin people, sometimes people give me seed. And I ask them a question, why, for what? I look at a widow the other day. The widow had a seed. Widow! Had 50,000. I was giving me a money for what? Say, my seed. I said, I'm not going to take her more. But a widow. I said, I will take it. He said, now waiting God put for my heart. I said, now waiting in my own heart. So I did tell you. I had the 100,000 I put on top. Brother, she may have been led. But let the, let the guilt be on me. It's better to be over cautious than to be careless. It's better to be over cautious than to be careless. I said, Lord, let the guilt be on me if you are the one really talking to her. But my conscience will not allow me to collect this money from a widow who has no husband. When she leaves here, how will she feed? She will look tattered. She was not looking okay. But somebody else will take that kind of money and say, knee down. This is our rejoicing. Not the testimony of a blind eye. Not the testimony of a cripple. The greatest testimony. He said, this is our rejoicing. The testimony of our conscience. No matter the blind eye that see. No matter the favor you enjoy. If your conscience is not at peace, do not give a testimony. You see, some people stand on the, on the altar. God now brought a helper. The helper now helped me. If we investigate where, it is a man they are sleeping with you. That's the helper. Oh. If we investigate where, it's a man that they are messing up. It's a man that they cannot boldly introduce. It's a, it's a process of pain. Somebody else is crying for them to rise. They now sack the man. And they now say they will give me the job. They now sack that guy. They now give me the letter. Praise the Lord. We should be clapping. That somebody was sacked. You now got the job. We should be clapping for you. No, I, I, what kind of testimony is that? The only church will give testimony. I entered the bus. Everybody died. But God brought me out. You see, church. Woo! What about those that died? The next person. Lord, we thank you for this preservation. But wow. May their soul rest. Peace. We are always. I'm not sure nobody's hearing me. But that is that's where we are. I'm trying to move on to the next point. I can't. That's where we are. May you not make some irredeemable mistakes 
some irredeemable mistakes some irretrievable blunders before the awareness before the the, the uselessness the valuelessness of the of the temptation becomes a reality to you am i communicating here yeah? the prodigal son he told the father say give me all that pertinent to me in his lifetime in other words you are good as dead because you think of inheritance after departure after the exit of the father but now give me the father gave him and the father brought him back and when he came back do you know the bible says the father saw him afar off is that what the bible says the father saw him afar off for you to see somebody afar off means you have been expecting the person so every day the father goes out to look and he saw him he embraced him hugged him he said give, give him the best rope Give me the fatted calf. He told the servant, bring the best clothes. Bring this. He didn't tell the boy to go inside. No. The first time you saw so much wealth, that was when you said you wanted your own. So for now, you are denied access to knowing what I have. But please, I will love you from afar. When people hurt you and they apologize, take the apology. But don't give them another opportunity to hurt you again. Am I talking to somebody here? Take the apology. Accept it. Love them. But please let there be a limit. Until they qualify. Never repeat a third assistance. Except by gratitude or by servitude. Except by gratitude. Or by servitude when you help when you bless people they are not grateful don't repeat it except they work for it the second time gratitude or servitude if they are not grateful let them work somebody came and said give me money for bike fare you gave the next day come again say go and carry that block that block carry from there go and drop it there carry that second one go and drop it there then come and take bike fare because you will never say thank you so work for it this is number four right and then I'll pray. Write this down. In the face of confrontation, maintain your declaration. Jesus face to face with death, yet his mouth was not shaken. The man said to him, Pilate said to him, do you know I have power over you? Jesus said, you have no power over me except it was given to you from above. In the face of temptations, of confrontation, maintain your declaration. In spiritual warfare, your mouth is your lifeline. Your mouth is your lifeline. Your mouth is your escape route. Your mouth is your, your navigation strength. Makatoba Rikatazaya. In Daniel chapter 10. If you read from verse 12. He said, Oh Daniel, from the first day that thou didst set thy heart to chasten and understand thyself before God. He said, Thy words were heard. I have come for thy words. Daniel, you are fasting for 21 days. I didn't come down because your stomachs are rumbling. I didn't come down, Daniel, because the worms in your stomach are biting. Because some of us, when we are fasting, we think God is seeing the worms in our stomach. Listen, the strength of a fast is not the absence of meal. It is the force of declaration. It is what you are saying in the midst of the fast that gives strength to the fast. He said, Daniel, from the day you set your heart to chasten yourself, thy words were cut ahead. I came for thy words. In Isaiah chapter 43 and verse 26, he said, declare thou that thou mayest be justified. He said that thou mayest be justified. Put me in remembrance. Let us plead together. Declare a word not declared is not confirmed. And the Lord walked with them, walking with them, confirming their words with signs following. When you don't declare, God does not confirm. You may see an accident in front of you. Don't shout, I am dead. Shout, I cannot die. Even if it's in front of you, you may see problem. A car is almost hitting you. Do not shout, I'm dying. Shout, I cannot die. You say, listen, you say, Apostle, why do I need declaration in confrontation? It is in confrontation that declaration is actually needed. No matter how real your attack is, the word of God is more sure 
He have a more sure word of prophecy. Prophecy came not in the old time by the will of man. But holy men of God spoke. Second Peter 1 19, Second Peter 1 21. Holy men of God spoke as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. Am I communicating here? Am I talking to somebody here? Am I talking to somebody? Romans chapter 10, from verse 8 to verse 15. What sayeth it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy heart and in thy mouth. That is the word of faith which we preach. For if thou shalt confess the Lord Jesus and believe in thy heart that God raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. As the scripture has said, he said, that believeth on him shall not be ashamed. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. For there's no difference between the Jew and the Greek. The same Lord, he said, who over all is rich unto all that call upon him. Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. How shall they call on him on whom they do not believe? How shall they believe on him of whom they have not heard? How shall they hear without a preacher? How shall they preach except they are sent? For as it is written, blessed are the feet of those that preach the gospel of peace, that bring glad tidings of good things. And verse 17 says, so therefore faith come by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. I want to tell you something today. No matter what you see, don't declare what you see. Declare what he says. Don't declare what the light, what this word shows you. Declare what the word tells you. In that your office, you are seeing a query letter. Declare promotion. In that bank alert, you are seeing your account on red. Declare six zeros. Declare nine zeros. No matter what you see, the doctor gave you a report and said this is cancer. You will declare he was wounded for my transgression. He was bruised for my iniquity. The chastisement of my peace was laid upon him and by his stripes I am healed. Ex Exodus 15, 26 I will put none of the diseases that I put upon the Egyptians upon you for I am the Lord. Be on your feet.